Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Here's a question. Which one makes more power on a cammed 4.8 liter LS? A low buck supercharger or a low buck turbocharger? Despite the fact that our low buck supercharger is no longer a low buck supercharger, we're going to compare them anyway. In this video, we're going to compare a low buck positive displacement supercharger to an equally low buck single turbo on a cammed 4.8 liter LS. Now, unfortunately for us, our low buck supercharger is no longer a low buck supercharger. After running the Cadillac 4.4 liter STS supercharger and intercooler assembly that we used to be able to buy for $250 to $300 back in the day, after doing the first video where we adapted that to our 4.8 liter LS using the adapters from Mac Daddy Parts, that blower is no longer a low buck blower, but we're going off the assumption that we could buy it back in the day. We're going to compare that directly to a low buck $163 eBay GT45 turbo that we got from DNA. Now there's a big difference in the pricing on that particular turbo also online, but that's not going to stop us from comparing both on our 4.8 liter LS. So which one makes more power? Our not so low buck supercharger or our maybe even more low buck turbo? Let's find out. To start our comparison of supercharging versus turbocharging on our 4.8 liter LS, let's start out with the supercharger, our low buck <laughs> positive displacement supercharger from the 4.4 liter Cadillac engine. Now this was done using the adapters from the guys at Mac Daddy Parts and unfortunately after we did the first video, obviously all of this stuff exploded and now these blowers are no longer inexpensive and we're hoping that the, obviously that the price comes back down to a realistic level, but back in the day, I bought one and many, many other people bought one. You, they were on sale for, you know, 250 or 300 bucks. So they they were pretty cheap. And it was cool to have a whole assembly like that with the blower and the intercooler. And it had a lot of cool stuff on it, especially for that kind of price. So it was a really good deal. Unfortunately, not so much anymore, but we're going to compare that to the turbo. But let's find out what the supercharger did. First of all, on our 4.8 liter, it was a canned 4.8. It had the JFR cam 595 lift, 224, 228 degree duration and 112 degree lobe separation angle. Otherwise, it was basically stock. It had a stock block crank. It had Gen 4 rods. It did have JE forged pistons. They had small domes on them, so it was about 10 to 1. 706 heads with valve springs, and it had the factory truck intake and throttle body, and it had inch and 7 eighths long tube headers run with the Holly HP management system. We had the Snake Eater Performance 1500cc injectors, not obviously that the, <clears throat> excuse me, that the NA motor needed that, but later on when we had the boost, we, we wanted to have enough fuel, especially with the E85 stuff. So this motor made a little over 400 horsepower and 368 foot-pounds of torque. When we added the blower to begin with, we started off with a pump gas too, and so it was fairly mild, and we made over 500 horsepower, 503 and 514 foot pounds. And then we just started stepping things up. We put a big throttle body on it. We then we added E85. Then we started adding timing. And then we finished up with the most amount of timing basically. And then once, once everything was said and done with the big throttle body and kind of maximum timing and stuff, we made almost 600 horsepower, 590 horsepower and 592 foot-pounds of torque. So the blower stuff did very well, and especially given the fact that it was originally, like I said, a $250 or $300 blower assembly that we had to use with those adapters. But there's certainly potential here, and it made good torque. You can see uh, the one thing, and you'll, you guys will get to yell at me about this in the comments, is I didn't start this test down low enough, because we, we could have shown the one area that the positive displacement supercharger does uh, improve things dramatically, especially down low. So if we were to start this at 2000 RPM, um, there's every possibility that we might still be making, um, you know, well over 500 foot pounds of torque and, and maybe as much as 550. Still, that torque curve looks fairly flat on this combination. But now let's take a look at what we did when we ran this same motor, same cam, heads, everything. So it's ran it on E85, but we ran it with the uh, the low buck $163 GT45 turbo that I always run on everything. So we'll take a look at that and then we'll get to kind of compare the two and find out which way is better, which one makes more power.
Okay, guys, here's the moment of truth, our comparison between the supercharged 4.8 liter and the turbocharged 4.8 liter. And this is our supercharged combination. This is basically the ultimate combination. This is the one that we made the most power on. So it had the big throttle body and inlet. It had roughly seven or 11 to 11 and a half pounds of boost. It was running E85. It had about 23 degrees of timing. And we could have filled in this area here um, below 4,500 with more timing, but we had ramped in timing just like we did on the turbo combination. So run in this manner, obviously this thing made 590 horsepower and 592 foot-pounds of torque. Now let's compare that when we run the turbocharged combination, the same motor. And we'll first compare it to seven pounds from the GT45. And actually at seven pounds, our turbo 4.8 liter made the same power, basically it made 593 horsepower. So one or two better than the, than the supercharged combination, but it made a lot less torque and it made less power all the way past 6,000, which is understandable since it has less boost down there and made a lot less power down here in the 3,000 to 3,500 range. Um, the peak torque on seven pounds is only 557 compared to 592 with the blower. So what happens when we run the turbo at the same boost level as the, <laughs> as the blower? When we run the turbo at the same boost as the blower. Here's what happens. Drum roll. What I'm going to do is get rid of the lower boost because that's kind of confusing. So here in red, we have our turbo 4.8 liter run at 11 pounds. And in blue, we have our supercharged 4.8 liter run at 11 pounds. And you can see there's a dramatic difference in power where we made 590 horsepower and 592 foot pounds with the blower. The turbo combination was all the way up at 658 horsepower. Peak torque was up at 614 foot-pounds. So with a turbo motor run at the same boost level, you can make more power with a turbo than you can with a supercharger. And the reason for that, there's actually two. The first reason is because there are no parasitic losses associated with driving the turbo. And there are with the blower. The blower, for it to produce that amount of airflow, you have to drive the blower. It has, it's processing that much airflow, so that costs power. You can take a look at the difference here, and that, that's a big portion of it. The other thing is that particular supercharger is not nearly as efficient at the way that it processes air. So I don't have charge temperature measurements differences between these two. Um, we only have them after the intercooler, and I can tell you that they were within a few degrees. So after the intercooler, they weren't dramatically different, but I don't have post intercooler temperatures to compare them. But a supercharger is not as efficient as a turbo at processing this amount of airflow. So this is the kind of difference we see at the same boost level. We're gonna make more power with the turbo than we do with the supercharger. But I also want you to take a look at another thing. Take a look at below 3600 or 3700 RPM. You guys can yell at me now in the comments. Had I run the blower combination, had we started the load, let's say at 2000 RPM, not that I think guys are going to wide open throttle at 2000 RPM anyway, but if you did, the the boost offered by the positive displacement supercharger would be immediate and you would probably make more torque down below 3500 rpm at wide open throttle on the supercharger than you would on the turbo because the turbo probably would not be spooled up at that rpm range now you could obviously size the turbo differently especially in this power range 650 horsepower, you could probably pick a better turbo, a more responsive turbo for this combination and get it to spool a little bit earlier. But the one thing that a positive displacement supercharger does well is that it has immediate boost response. So if you're driving down the road and you just nail the throttle, it's going to have boost like right away. And in that situation, because the other thing that helps this combination for the turbo side is that when we run them on an engine dyno, we go to wide open throttle and wait till the stationary load happens and the turbo has spooled up and then we release it. That's not what happens on a chassis dyno or out on the street. So the differences down low in this boost response would probably be exaggerated in the real world, unlike the engine dyno. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn in our comparison between the STS Cadillac not so low buck roots blower versus the turbo all run on the same combination? Well, the first thing we learned is turbos make more power 
than superchargers. I mean, if you take a look at the other video I have up where I ran all the different forms of supercharging on a modular Ford, we ran a roots blower, we ran a twin screw blower, we ran a centrifugal blower, and we ran turbos all on the same motor, same air fuel, same timing, same boost, all of that stuff. Turbos make more power. So with knowing that if turbos make more power, should all the other ones just disappear and go away? The answer to that is obviously no. The reason that we have different forms of force deduction is because we have different people. Different people have different needs. Not everybody wants to put turbos on their combination and for good reason. There are a lot of reasons guys want superchargers instead of turbos. Not everybody wants to do the fabrication necessary to put turbos on their combination. Maybe there are no kits available. You know, not everybody can whip up a Y pipe, mount the turbo, do the exhaust. Some guys don't want to deal with the heat. There's also emissions legalities for a lot of guys. They want to put a, an emissions legal or smog legal kit on that just bolts on. They like the look of a supercharger. They like the feel of it. They want the immediate boost response. They want the noise. There are lots of different reasons why different people want different things. And let's face it, variety is the spice of life. I'm Richard Holder. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep on testing.